Hey folks, what's going on? Armin Hammer here, and you are about to enjoy a brand new episode of The Sand Podcast, in which we talk about Tommy Marquez and Sean Woodland's new podcast, and some of the things they talked about on their podcast. That's right, it's like a podcast inception, right? Uh, we also talk about uh, Chase and My Experience at Wadapalooza, as well as True Detective Season 3, Episode 3, and just a whole lot of other stuff. I think you guys are going to enjoy. See you next time. Mine's in the car. I was going to bring it in. Because I was recording stuff. Can we get a clap? But then I fucking forgot. Yeah. I'm a bad vlogger. Clip, clap, patty whack. Uh, is that a disease? Is what a disease? Cliff clap? Cliff clap. Mm-hmm. Don't we all have it? It, it might have been what I had. It, <laughs> make, it makes you talk like this there. <laughs> you know, every time you get the cliff That's clap, you talk like this. It's actually a pretty good... Uh, I don't think that's a very good clip. <laughs> Pretty Is good that a good clip? Pro of getting a disease. Yeah. Mm. Oh man, I lost it. I made a list. Oh no, I here it is. Welcome to this episode of slightly agitated narwhals. <laughs> mm. Yeah, well, the first two words are correct. Mm-hmm. And my nose has been feeling a little. I don't know. In this cold weather, I've been noticing its length more. It could be growing. It's been pointy. So it could be could be on my way to narwhal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, isn't that just isn't that the goal for all old men? You go narwhal or elephant. And you just go like giant nose or giant ears. Maybe mm-hmm. sometimes both. Fuck yes. it. You know, your nose keeps growing after you die. Wow. No, it does not. You should have just leaned into it. Yeah. If you do, uh, if you eat paleo for the last 10 years of your life, your nose keeps growing after you die. Excellent. That's right. You know, if you, uh, you're you on TRT, your uh, face grows. Yeah. But if you do <laughs> paleo for the last 20 years of your life, you never die. Oh, you just nice. just ascend into a gluten-free when do you plane. Get, well, no, it's, it's if you keep eating, if you eat paleo the last 10 years of your life, what happens is you become a, uh, a Navi. I like uh, like what's-his-face at the end of Avatar. Yeah, uh-huh. there you go. At what point can we stop blaming uh, Christmas vacation and break for... Our rustiness. <laughs> oh yeah, no. There's there's never gonna be there's no. never gonna be a moment to stop blaming it. We took us we took a single like two week period off, and we since just then didn't haven't recovered yet. Everything's very that abstract. Said, I feel like we nailed it last week. I feel like last week was pretty good. Now we just need to like roll that energy yeah. into it. We just weren't our full for at full force for real. last week. Well, okay. So slightly agitated in our walls mm-hmm. is courtesy of Nico Boshoff, which I'm probably mispronouncing. Mm-hmm. Murdering that one. Nico, again. good job, dude. Appreciate it. One of my favorite online comments under a YouTube video of us uh, was um, I was because I looked to see if anyone had any feedback about True Detective, and one of the things was I wish that the podcast was called something different so I could recommend it to my friends. <laughs> 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 and it's like, and so let us know, Scalas Nation. You know, is is is, is scale is needed or sand such a confusing name that we can't that you you feel like you can't share it with your friends? That's feedback that we would like to know. Yeah. Um, uh, the the uh, process in which you use to come up with other names, I don't know how about you guys, but for me, it's all about moments of inspiration, which have been few and far in between for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I yeah, I, I guess if it really is that shitty that people are are just totally <laughs> totally like, hey, that thing you've been doing for the past few years, fuck it, fuck you, come up with another name, bitch, make a ne- make a better name, yeah, uh, so a better name it- would probably just be the name of the podcast. Yeah, uh, we're going to call it The Nerdist. Uh, that's going to be the new name of the podcast. <laughs> Better name, uh, ABN. There you go. <laughs> I wanted to call it 321 Show originally, and that was that was, that was was vetoed for, uh, by someone back when we were at Flow. That was vetoed for some reason. But then we used it. Too show. cute. Yeah. We used it for a little cute. bit as an intro, though. Yeah, we, yeah well, back in the, the video version originally. Yeah. I think the cute name works because it's by contrast to how uncute we all are. That's true. Just these just disgusting trolls here sitting in front of the camera. Neck if it's beards. called 321 Show yeah. Uh, yeah. with some kind of brightly colored graphics there. I don't know. I like that. I like the, con- I like the contrast. Like the energy. Pony graphics. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In a mm-hmm. rainbow. Yeah. It also kind of counts. Floral music. It sounds like a kid show, doesn't it? Three, two, one, show, and like a bunch of kids all learn about <laughs> cooperation. Like an animated Armin's yeah. face drops in the frame. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Sunken <laughs> eyes, fucked up hair. Uh, I woke up like this, guys. <laughs> I'm thinking more like haven't a kid. left the house today. <laughs> Literally woke up in what I slept in last night. What's up? No. Christ. Content uh. creator life. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> you're acting as if you're unique in that regard. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I I am absolutely not. But speaking of podcast names, mm. 
Uh, did you know that Tommy Marquez and Sean Woodland launched their own podcast? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, good for them. I don't particularly think it has a catchy name at no. all. Mm-hmm. It actually probably has like what I would consider to be a particularly poor name. Mm. Talking Elite Fitness. Mm. It sounds just, like a joke. Yeah, it's not a great... It it's sounds not like a, a name that we would have had to have used at one point yeah. at our old job. Yeah, it's like, it's like, the, it's like a yeah. name you use when you're legally obligated to not say certain things. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that uh, that's precisely it there. But the interesting part about it is they've released three episodes wait. so far. Okay. And Wait, what's up? Oh, what? Isn't Talking Fit the name of a show or it's something? It's my... Uh, that, that I, oh. I own that. Oh, okay. I, gotcha. I use it for nothing, okay. but I that's own right. it. Okay, that's right. Okay, I was about to say Talking Fit and then Talking... Elite yeah. Fitness feels like kind of a troll on the name Talking when Fit, I, does it not? When I changed, uh, when I changed over from the Naked CrossFitter, uh, and then I had to change it because of CrossFit sending me a C and D, and I changed it to a Hey Naked. Mm-hmm. I, after uh, Hey Naked didn't quite work, I turned it to Talking Fit. Yeah, yeah. and that just disappeared yeah. so the fit the fat and the fugly <laughs> oh my <laughs> god i'd be into that that's, that's, that's does that mean me the fugly what's happening i don't know here? i don't know but uh that's some something something in the in that realm seems to kind of work because chase be, is way fitter and you know all things being equal cliff is slightly fatter than i am which makes me the fugly <laughs> and i'm offended by this all right I trim my beard regularly. <laughs> I, uh, I'm a, you know, <laughs> women have found me attractive in the past. Is that any easier to share? Like, yes. yeah, listen, listen to these guys on the fit, the fat, That's the right. fugly talk about left, true detective. Man. Oh, speaking of which, by the way, I uh, can triple F. I don't know why I feel suddenly inspired to share this with you guys, but <laughs> it's um, his dick. <laughs> so uh, this, this is. Want to hear me? So you guys want to hear me like totally make us not able to be shared on uh, f- on on CrossFit? Nail no. it! Let's do All right. this. Shit. Yeah. So a bi- an do. album was recently released. I'm sorry, the second album was recently released by a. I, th- I want to say that they're a South African slam metal band, but uh, this is the nice. t- but they but they some sort of some sort of slam metal band. I'm not sure if they're South African or not, but this is the name of the band. Get ready, everyone. <laughs> Uh, the name of the band, which is all an acronym, but it all, which is unpronounceable, but it stands for acidic vaginal liquid exploding generated by mass amounts of, I'm not even going to read the rest of it, but it literally goes on for about 82 words. Uh, and, uh, anyway, so yeah, I think it would probably bring us the vibes down if I kept Fecal reading it. fisting is in there. Fecal nice. fisting is in there. Nun dying under the roof of a burning church is also in the name of the band. Uh, I love it. Uh, and by I love it, I mean God damn it. Yes. Anyway, don't so do sometimes sometimes like editing really is the creative process. Like the creative process yes. is in the deciding what not to include. Correct. Man, that's a, or that's a creative trait. Yeah, but or sometimes you have to explore the idea of more is more as an end in itself. This is a band that has an eighty-two word or so. Uh, I'm just guessing long name and that, you know, just embrace the absurdity of it. More yeah, is they more. They definitely do. Embrace the absurdity, I believe, is their first studio album. Yes. Yeah, if I remember African correctly. slam metal band. Yes. South African slam metal, mm-hmm. which sounds like a fake genre. No, but real. anyway, Talking Elite Fitness, Tommy Marquez, Sean Woodland, they have their own podcast. They've done three episodes. Yeah. And Damn. they they've been shared by CrossFit twice already, <laughs> by the way, which is really interesting because CrossFit fired them uh-huh. and is now just using their content for free oh. <laughs> which is, mm. might leave a, a bit of a bad taste in their mouths mm. i don't know yeah, but yeah. either way they uh they have the show up it's it's all right um you know do you think they tried amrap mentality and then <laughs> saw there was already two other <laughs> podcasts called amrap you know one of them had to change their name right oh the what the cnn version of the amrap name cnn yeah yeah that was the that was oh, the, that's second the one, one that's is that staying around no that's the one that changed mm. what are they called now uh imam they're called oh, the yeah. Emo Podcast. Good call. What other CrossFit words and acronyms haven't been used or copyrighted? Oh, lots of them. I have two plenty of show there. names. Oh, yeah? Every two minutes. Do you have them all just written down somewhere? Yeah. Yeah. yeah just I do. like a little notes file chipper. on your phone. Full the chipper is still available. Why are you yeah. Why are you throwing out our right. best stuff, dude? Yeah. Come on. Uh, really, wouldn't that be a better ooh. name for on the minute because you're just plowing through them, you know? Chipper. I like your work, you know? A couplet. Yes. It's just a guy girl show where uh, they talk about CrossFit. Nice. Being Name caught. pending, trademarked. Yes. Anyway, so talking cool. elite fitness. <laughs> Here's the interesting part. Modal Domains, which will be the name of my CrossFit-oriented death metal band. <laughs> it's modal go. Domains. Is there some, is there some <laughs> variation on Wood Chipper? Can we have Wood Chipper in there somewhere? 
<laughs> modal domains. I think everyone's yeah. reacting. But you're right. Wood Chipper would be good. A, mm-hmm. That would be actually a great name for a modal domain song would be Chipper. But then it's actually just about a guy being put through a wood chipper. It's Chipper, but it's spelled X-I-P-P-E-R. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> anyway, uh, in the first episode, they talk about the process by which they learned that they were being fired and it sounds mm-hmm. pretty fucked up i mean at, at one oh point my god i want to listen to that so yeah, yeah, bad it's it's, mm. it, it's uh it's, it's gonna you sound really, real fucking really, familiar you Kyle. buried the lead <laughs> it's gonna yeah. sound real f- i've been oh. trying to talk about it for 10 minutes what has someone been distracting you with a bunch of digressions into weird nonsense Mobile domains brother yes uh guys if you go listen to this podcast after listening to this podcast you gotta comment on their pod their itunes sent by sam saying sent by sam <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag sent by San. Yes, uh, that is mandatory. Yeah, leave them five star. Yeah, four. Good. Out Scale of is nation mobilize. Scale is nation mobilize. Go comment on their shit. Yeah, help them out. Help them out. Um, anyway, so they talk about they talk about the process of being let go, and at one point they were, they basically saw like the first round of the uh, the first round go off mm-hmm. of the layoffs, and then uh, they were like, so do we have to worry about polishing up our resumes right now and uh uh the like whatever executive or mm-hmm. vp or whatever was handling that was like no every mm-hmm. single one of you is part of the plan moving forward <laughs> 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 which is about the most like miserable like backstabby thing that could have happened mm. but they go on to explain these like really fucked up you know situations in which basically like you know tommy marquez by the way had to escort like he walked his brother out like he he was the guy who walked his brother out his brother used to work for HQ2 yeah. and his brother oh, okay. was let go in the first round see when you began playoffs. that sentence i thought tommy Mar- marquez had to escort i assumed that that <laughs> meant he had to the only way he can get money now is working as a male escort <laughs> which escort i think as a verb no, yeah, yeah. dude that uh-huh. had to escort he had to escort uh-huh. that guy would make a uh-huh. killing uh-huh. he would he would. He would. He, he's got abs there. He's yeah. a, I'd say. I'd say body. He's Handsome, a. He's a tan, body. He's a nine. <laughs> fit. Face. He's about a eight. Uh, seven, surprisingly eight. flexible. Yeah. yeah. I don't uh, know these mm-hmm. things. Anyway, so uh, yeah, they they tell this this like wild fucking story about how you know Sean Woodland and there's there's so there's a whole bunch of the crew, including Sean Woodland, who is who has stayed on to finish the C- the CBS hours mm-hmm. that they needed to do, but yeah, essentially yeah. knew that like they were working their last gig. Like they mm. knew that they were going to be laid off yeah, right yeah. after they were done. They that were only like being kept around. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty fucked up. Um, they tell the story. So you guys watch the video. I shared the video of grandma's house from CrossFit, right? Of mm-hmm. the old man. Yes. in the fucked up living room. Ooh, with like yes. the really creepy it looks music. Like, it looked like a scene out of Inland Empire or some other David Lynch Hold on. Movie I, 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 didn't, I didn't watch this video. Uh, okay. I... So basically to just sum it up real quick for you, Cliff, so you don't have to look it up. Yeah, yeah, Armin yeah. will insert the video clip into this YouTube video here. Nope. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> uh, but you really should though. It's worth the work. I mean, if anything's worth the work, this one might be worth clip. the work. You're right. This um, one might be worth the work but what you're looking at is they appear to in the same way uh instead of doing the technique videos in like that white construct that from the matrix that they would normally do they have created a proscenium style stage which looks like roseanne basically. oh no put your, way put your mic up put your mic up and listen to it what? the the things on the bottom listen to the music <laughs> all right so this is an old man oh. sitting and standing yeah. on a couch and he has two jugs of antifreeze in front of him, which he just curled up, and now he's pressing. Yeah. And this is the music. He's standing inside of his living room, yep. which looks like, well... Well, this is which what's fucked up. Is I actually thought the video was pretty cool, but I had never listened to it with the audio The audio before. is what takes over Because the it's just like, um, is that... Uh, like when I saw it, I thought, oh, this is kind of a fun, self aware, kind of silly way of doing it by having this shitty, undressed set with this guy doing it. But I'm putting this sentimental music over the top of it. Like, what was your intention and how badly did you miss the mark on the I creation think they of this video? I hit the mark right on the fucking nose of what they were trying to do. I'll tell you that right yeah, now. Yeah, but I would have put like yakety sacks or something underneath it. I don't know. Oh, just, I, you I, know. I agree. I would have definitely used <laughs> something different. But. Or just like a weird drone and at the end cut to Dennis Hopper's face in slow motion just screaming with a lion roar underneath it. There something like that. Yeah. You know. I'll fuck anything that moves! <laughs> Heineken, fuck that shit. Paps, Paps blue, ribbon. <laughs> anyway, I have no idea what yeah. you guys are referencing. Blue velvet, you sons of, you uncultured sons of so, bitches. So uh, the story behind that 
it, the, Don't you look at me. The set is... <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> Cliff won't break character. It's really scary. <laughs> Don't you fucking look at me. <laughs> Daddy wants to fuck. Oh my god. What the fuck? See Blue Velvet, everybody. It's a good movie. And it's a lot like that video that of the old man in the living room. Anyway. In that it's terrifying. Oh. Huh. The yeah. set is called Grandma's House. Yeah. Hell yeah. And it is designed to look like the living room of a old northeastern mm-hmm. cup like person's couple home. a day after they moved from, out of that house. And yeah, or something. <laughs> Being from in a, a, somewhat it, the northeast, they well, nailed it. It looks like a sitcom of that. Yes. Because yeah. it's not that is that is sitcom yes. lighting, yes. not not like not natural lighting. lighting. Yes. Yeah. And uh it is built on the on the ashes of the update show, update show studio. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> they, okay. They okay. literally tore the update show studio down to build is, that set. Oh my god. This is literally that meme. And of, that man, yeah. Go ahead. No, no, go for no, it, no, Chase. It's, it's the meme of uh Jeremy Clark from uh Top Gear where he's pointing to the car and he's like this is great, but I love this. <laughs> it's literally grandma's house is the piece of shit that he loves. Yeah. <laughs> the update show is Absolutely. the old thing. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and that man, that's the landlord. Of the building? Of the building. Oh, that's that awesome. HQ so, is in, so, yeah. Oh, that's the actual landlord? That is the actual landlord. Oh, okay. I wonder nice. if that was the character he was playing in this no, no, little play. No, that's just the dude. The okay. dude is the landlord. You know, wow. brought big step back here, I think all I, I I think all positive. Like, I like the idea. Like, there's something really weird and cool and interesting about, like, a, a company who has this killer live event sport thing saying, you know, this ESPN style desk we were using to do it, like ripping it down, building an old man's house, building the set from married with children, and then just having an old man perform movements on it. That's weird. And I kind of love it. I kind of love that they're doing it. Yeah. I don't think that it works exactly as what they're intending, but I love the symbolism of it. I think they are they intending? (laughs) <laughs> they are intending. Well, they're intending to put the message out there that they are shifting their focus yeah. from an ESPN style coverage of sports to this is how you work out to stay fit. Yes. And though I don't think this works precisely as a bold statement of intention, I think that it works symbolically. I think they're going to have to refine their whole media approach given this new focus. Mm-hmm. But um, all I can say is that HQ. Um, if you rent out that, if you're fine renting out that space yes. to outside parties to shoot some shit there, I would love to shoot some shit in that, yes. uh, in that set. Grandma's There's house. all sorts of weird, all sorts of weird, creepy ass shit we can make happen in that space. We could re- we could reshoot scenes from Blue Velvet, but only using elite I CrossFit Games athlete. <laughs> <laughs> can we have the jugs of antifreeze too? That can be incorporated. There's be all very kinds of jugs. Weird. Yeah, there's all sorts of very weird things you can do with that. Mm-hmm. So they also talk <laughs> funnels and orifices. Is all I'm saying <laughs> about how wow we could have it's almost so gotten much, away. It's so much better though that it's on the uh, the, the the old stage because it's like. It's like it sends a fucking message, you know? Oh, it know. does it send says, a very clear message. It's like Genghis Khan did not have to eat dinner like on the sc- on on like a platform both supported by the screaming bodies of like conquered peoples. I thought you were going to say scrotums. But he did. <laughs> yes, their scrotums their scrotums were there as well. They were technically there. Mm-hmm. Um but he did it to send a message and that's what they're doing. They're saying we we uh we're making a change. <laughs> Can you imagine? He could probably have like wallets and like jackets made out of scrotums. Yes. Kong. He probably did. Mm-hmm. You guys see House that Jack built? <laughs> no. Uh, no, I didn't see the house that Jack built, but I read about it oh, because yeah. people kept talking about yeah, how yeah. fucked up it is. What yeah. is that? Oh, it's. I think we might have mentioned it briefly in the podcast. The new Lars von Trier film. Uh, yeah, strong. Like no bullshit aside, don't go see it unless you are kind of into like unless you're comfortable with really extreme stuff. But that being said, it, it's about a serial killer played by Matt uh, Dillon. It's really, really, really good. It's a Lars von Trier film who did Antichrist and uh, oh, Nymphomaniac and all that shit. Anyway, it's really good, but it is really brutal. And uh, the whole like he could have made wallets and coin purses out of parts of bodies thing. That is in-house the Jack built. Wow. Yeah, in a pretty fun way. So In a fun way. In a fun, in a fun way. way. Mm-hmm. Anyway. The movie's hilarious, by the way. It's, it, it is it, funny. It plays pretty much as a comedy for the most part. Yes. So just keep that in mind, too, folks. With a lot of brutal, brutal murder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not real. So 
There was another part to this point. I've just been. This is in twenty minutes. I was talking Stay about on another podcast, guys. Oh yeah, <laughs> and all of it has been going to this moment right uh-huh. here. Oh okay. shit! I'm ready. Climax. As far as anyone knows, mm-hmm. right now, there are, according to Tommy Marquez and Sean mm-hmm. Woodland, zero plans to broadcast the 2019 CrossFit Games. Whoa! I feel like I said something like this. Hmm. Like the games weren't going to be televised. Hmm. Yeah, mm, the revolution will not be televised. It will you not guys. Be. The revolution will not be. Televised. It will not be televised. Um, By zero that's great for plans. Does that mean nothing's locked down, or there's no intention to formulate plans? That means they have. Um, they no longer have any contracts with any broadcasting hmm. partners, hmm. and they no longer have any. Uh, staff on hand or. Uh, contract partnerships with stream producers. Mm. So that those are basically the two parts to the equation. Hmm. And I have this thing. You're gonna <laughs> shoot and neither, produce this thing. Neither, <laughs> of them are, neither of those parts of the equation are there. We of could. the triforce of of broadcasting a thing, they currently have the, the thing. thing. <laughs> 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 they don't have the platform for the stream uh-huh. to go on to, or the group and or people to create the stream. Mm. So they're kind. Of, they're like a third of the way there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is feeling old school. This is feeling like 2009. Follow yeah. the games on Twitter. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that the vibe that we're looking for, though? <laughs> is that really what we're hoping for? Like, listen, I'll get out there. I'll fucking live stream that shit on my iPhone yeah. like, all day long. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, but, I have uh, an iPhone X. I'll be okay. Yeah, I have a great camera. Listen, CrossFit right field team right here. These four guys deploy us with, you know, iPhones, but the good iPhones with the two cameras, and we will cover that shit. We will Facebook Live that entire game's. It's like if you yeah. want to watch the CrossFit Games, please uh, friend request Chase, Armin, <laughs> Cliff, and Kyle on Facebook because they will be doing Facebook Live all weekend. Yep. You'll get knowledgeable and hilarious running commentary the whole time. <laughs> Mostly the cameras will be pointed <laughs> at us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Turn your phone horizontal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. And then after you've already started the stream, so it's just sideways. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. I was literally grumbling about that as soup right before we got on the podcast. I was like, why can't I change the fucking orientation on a video in this goddamn thing? Yeah. Mm. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so there's that. That's mm-hmm. happening. And um, to switch gears, mm-hmm. I I hung out with two CrossFit Games champions this past weekend. Indeed, you nice. did. I had an hour long interview with Matthew Fraser, and a less yeah. than hour long interview. And a less than hour, a three minute interview <laughs> with Rich Froning. But th- there's a story behind the Rich Froning thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's the story behind the Rich Froning thing. When I had an interview with him in early December or whatever, and we had sort of decided, like, we'll connect at mm-hmm. Wadapalooza since we're both going to be there. Thursday, I arrive and I text him, like, hey, good luck this weekend. I know you're going to be really crazy busy. Schedule's all over the place. Let's let's chat and we'll we'll get together afterwards if things are cool. Friday comes around, uh, his team DNFs the last workout of the mm-hmm. day, and they're looking real not good. Mm-hmm. Saturday morning comes around, and they DNF the first workout of the day, and at this point, I'm like, he's going to nuke this place, mm-hmm. and I'm, and we're nev- I, he's never going to talk to me again. Not well, that no I did anything. Gonna talk ever again. Yeah, <laughs> not that I did anything, but that just, just, just the existence of someone who wants to approach him in this mm-hmm. moment, I think, is going to be. So I, I kept radio silence, and then Monday comes around, and... Uh, Spoiler alert, Rich Froning and his team did not earn the invitation. They didn't win Wadapalooza. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, Rough man, road. what the fuck? What's going to happen here, right? So mm-hmm. I text a mutual friend of ours, and I'm like, hey, man, uh, like, give me give me like a real shot here. Like, tell me, mm-hmm. you you know, you've known him for longer than I have. Like, as, is he going to be approachable after losing? Mm-hmm. And he's like, ah, 50-50. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll take those odds any day of the week. That's yeah. not bad at all. What's the worst that could happen? So I texted him, and I was Just like, kicks hey. Kicks him square in the nuts. I, I was like, hey, I, you know, I don't know what you're up to, but you know, love mm-hmm. to get together for some stuff. And he's like, yeah, come over. So he sent me his Airbnb address, which, by the way, they had rented like this baller-ass Airbnb on the beach. It was awesome. Uh, but they had they needed room for like 12 people, yeah, so yeah. it makes sense. Anyway, so. <laughs> if you split 100 grand 12 ways, it's only. So we went. Uh, I went over to the Airbnb, and we spent... Uh, about an hour 
watching The Office and talking about football. <laughs> See and that's then, that's what I that's the kind of content I want. I Why don't you like, the can't turn was, the fucking camera on? Fuck that! I was just enjoy, I was just enjoying hanging out. I was like, this is yeah. way fucking better that than anything cool, else though. I could be doing right now. <laughs> I know, this and my jealousy makes better. me wish there was video. So we're just we just hung out. We watched uh, watched an episode of The Office. We watched some uh, football highlights because it was Championship Sunday on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Um, and the Rams and the Patriots are going to the Super Bowl, which is good for me because mm-hmm. I'm from LA and I like the Patriots, so mm-hmm. I win either way. And then. Uh, we spent a little bit of time talking about sort of like w- how the weekend went and some of mm-hmm. the stuff that he'd noticed and all this stuff. And I was like, all right, well, like, let me get a few minutes with you. And then the end result is I got three minutes. Chase, you want to open the door for, mm-hmm. for him? Thanks. <laughs> um, the end result is that three minute interview with Rich Froning, which was just a snippet out of the time that I spent hanging out with him, which mm-hmm. is way fucking cooler, I think, than, yeah, yeah. than it would have been if I if I just had like a 25 minute long interview with the guy yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's pretty pretty rad. i'm thinking that since you didn't get most of your hangout on camera that you're you're not being 100 percent honest with what you did in that hour the the watching the office and stuff that's just you just you just kind of improv that in the moment for this conversation what, Perhaps. Were, what was really going on well I, I mean if i told you i'd have to kill you so there you go. Hmm. i can't tell you okay there you go because i don't want to kill you i appreciate that <laughs> Anyway, so any insights into fitness from Rich Froning during any insights that that did he deploy any fitness metaphors to help interpret the office or the forthcoming football season or, no. or conversely did he deploy any office metaphors to interpret his performance at Wadapalooza? No. Yes. No. There was no. none of that. Okay. Uh, I just I think so. Their their performance such at Wadapalooza. <laughs> their performance is such a jam. That's good. Their performance at Wadapalooza was uh, not characteristic Mm. but it was also you know it was also from their perspective very different than what like regionals or the Mm. games ever really looked like you know think of like the schedule like you know friday they had a morning event an afternoon event and a night event right whereas for the past five years maybe even six years basically regionals and games have been split where the team events all happen in the morning and then the individual events all happen in the afternoon Mm -hmm. so they just kind of like pack all that shit together whereas like at Wadapalooza, they would have to you know, go do a thing, go back to their Airbnb, hang out for a few hours, and then like, ru- like you know, rustle up the fucking energy to go exercise again. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And I imagine that was pretty exhausting. But it was, that was something that every everybody had to deal with mm-hmm. um, that was competing there. But at the same time, it's just not, I, I just don't think it was something that they were particularly used to or, or you know, maybe even foresaw happening. But uh, yeah, I mean, overall... They just got, I mean, fuck, the team that won is basically four individual athletes, like yeah. four pretty fucking good individual mm-hmm. athletes, Cody Mooney, Alex Smith, Jess Griffith, and Jamie Green. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're probably not going to be accepting their invite. Mm-mm. So, hmm. you know. And is it, does that, even though I watched your fun uh, breakdown on that cool grid of all the... <laughs> Of how it works. So if they don't accept their invite, does that team spot go to anyone else? Yeah, the team spots get backfilled to the, to that uh, that that sanction event. Okay, so, so whoever made second, to yeah, well, second place already has a spot. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's the same team that won Dubai. Right. So right, right. then it'd be third to be team misfit. Yeah, so Chandler so Smith, third. One, mm. one finger missing. Yeah, right. China right. Cho. nine finger Chandler. Yes, Chandler nine fingers. Who, was, who else was on that team? It was China Cho, mm-hmm. Chandler, I think Kenzie Riley was Kenzie on that Riley, team. Kenzie Riley, and then uh, uh, Jordan Cook. I want to say. Dude, super fucking fit. Yeah, that they're all super fit. It was awesome. Um, but nice. overall, it was really cool. It was really really cool. Uh, you know, the bookends of my Wadapalooza trip were mm-hmm. the first day we were there. I got that hour long interview with Matt, nice. which was sweet. And then the last day we were there, I hung out with Rich Froning and team for an hour. So yeah. I'll take it that. Book ended with fitness. Yeah, there was a lot of fitness in, in the middle. No, like no, you hitting workouts. In the middle was mostly me eating a lot of candy and the nice. people I was staying with going, "You eat a lot of candy." <laughs> so Chase, Chase had time to get a workout in. I saw you with mm, that log, one or two, putting sandbags over it. It's a good time. A fell tree. Yeah, it was it's very crazy. How hard it was to find a place to work out in a <laughs> fucking fitness festival. You just at a fitness <clears> festival, <throat> you just you ended up just using a grassy area with a tree on it. You know. So before Wada, we even, we before we even left for Wadapalooza, mm-hmm. I texted Justin from Morning Chalk Up, and I was like, "Hey man, let's get some CrossFit in because mm-hmm. I know Armin's bitch ass isn't gonna want to work out." <laughs> and then it's I was true. like, "It's not it's the wrong." D- the day before we left, mm-hmm. I decided to be like, "Hey man, to Armin, do yeah. you you want to try to get some fitness <laughs> in while we're there?" And he's like, "Yeah, dude, for sure, for sure." I was negative. Yes, negatory. 
Yeah, man. I, my 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 ability to commit to fitness when it's not do it right now is very high. <laughs> like I can commit to fitness all day long, but when it actually comes to do it right right now, ah, oh, man, it feels like a lot more work than. So. Yeah, most of the times, uh, the first time that you guys went and worked out, I napped on mm. the grass, yes. uh, which was great. It was yeah. really nice to fall mm-hmm. asleep. They And the grass was right beside the place we were going to work out. Yeah. Mm. But that place was taken up. That yeah. was wit. So I literally just takes. lay down on the grass and fell asleep. That was cool. Like in the sun the second spot, like time, a cat. No, yeah, well, it, was, it wasn't It was sun. It was sunny, actually. It was nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was nice. Uh, and then uh, the second time you guys went and worked out, I decided to go eat. Mm-hmm. And then the third time you guys worked out, what was my excuse that time? Uh, <laughs> can't remember. Some shit you made up. I think you were with Rich Froning. There we go. I made some no. shit up about being with. I mean, I went and hung out with Rich Froning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, you missed out on that first one. Like he's right. We had a log. Mm-hmm. We had a seventy-pound sandbag yeah. that the people at Barbells for Boobs provided to us mm-hmm. and allowed us to take a hundred feet away from their their vendor. Nice. And uh, then we had some double unders next to a porta potty. Nice. Just off to the side of Wadapalooza, you could watch some mediocre fitness yeah. going down for free. For free. It's yes. great. Do you I have any plans to televise time. your fitness? You know, live streams, CBS. You know, once I get significantly more fit, maybe I can get like Flow Elite to, to you know, get the camera to flash on me for five seconds. Get, get the nod. That'd be good. Word. That would be good. Uh, how was your Wadapalooza weekend, Chase? Wadapalooza was really good, man. It was a lot of fun uh, running around and getting to see everybody. Unfortunately, I didn't get to see a whole lot of fitness mm. just due to the the fucking long lines just to get into the stands mm. and the masses and masses of people. Um, last year was pretty easy because we had a media pass, so I could just you know sneak wherever. But uh, I don't know. It, it was fine. Uh, it was definitely a lot bigger this year, and there was a lot more like uh, things to do with the vendors. I don't know if you guys saw on for Cellucor for Extend, but we had a VO2 max test in mm, our booth. Interesting. So I had to be there for a lot of that. Uh-huh. Um, so I tested my VO2 max. Nice. How is it? And understand that I can't interpret any of the information you're going to give me. Right. Right. So it was a 50, 54.1. That's either really impressive or it isn't. Oh, nice. Oh, there you go. Yes. Oh. The test, hmm. the test superior. Yes. For, for They don't know. <laughs> that test superior for my age. <laughs> it's, a right. range, it's a range of negative 7,000 to 55. 55. Yeah. There you go. Mm, nice. You got a 54.1. Nice. There you go. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm happy with it because nice. I, didn't, I didn't do it how you're supposed to do it. Like, you're supposed mm. to go for broke and, like, really hurt yourself on that <laughs> runner. And I stopped significantly before that. Yeah. And I did it right after finishing my first workout with Justin. Nice. I actually wanted to do it, yeah. but I didn't get around to, to making it happen, which is a bummer. You got to make time yeah. for I don't know when my next. Uh, I don't know when my next opportunity to get a VO2 max test when is When I retest be, mine. You just come with. I think they do do a two for one deal. Cool. I would love to do it because seven is my lucky number. So you get it. Might pull a seven. I don't get it. (laughs) Oh, well, you see, um, here's the thing. I'm not very fit. So Uh, I'm just theoretically, were I to do it, I would get a lower score than Chase. But sometimes, you know, you know, I want to exaggerate. I exaggerate. As long as it's, as long as it's. (laughs) As long as you don't actually do the test, we'll never know. No, it's just so true. You could technically have. I I, I smell some some pretty some Arm and Hammer TV content brewing. Listen, the VO2 yeah, max. What the test should be is: Can Chase's VO2 max be greater than the combination, the sum of <laughs> Cliff and Kyle's oh, VO2? Oh yeah, max. yeah. Now Oof. VO2 max. Is, What's the spread? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, is it, it actually? I don't, I honestly don't know what it's measuring, and the f- discussion of what it's measuring would be boring for podcast. So I'm gonna stop talking I, now. Mm. It, it's just it's super simple. It's like your body's ability to efficiently use oxygen. Mm. So like how how much air can your motor take in? Yeah. And use and turn in the power i i'm gonna go out on a limb how much say can you that, suck i'm gonna go out on a limb and say that i probably have the lowest v2 vo2 max of anyone uh at this table i don't know um, man i don't know how to judge it because i got to see all fucking mm, levels of the spectrum we did like yeah. 200 tests and one of them included our like bodybuilding athlete like <laughs> dudes jacked to the fucking tits like yeah. just shredded abs quads for days yeah. he hops up and does it in like Dude had just started running, and he was like, huh, "That's it." Yep. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're like, I'm, "They're like, yeah, it's like a, it's like around a 40. That's 
that's, that's fine. Alive. <laughs> you exist. And then we uh-huh. had a girl on our team do it, and she's like skinny, like looks like a cross country mm-hmm. runner, and she fucking like scored the same like an Olympian <laughs> would score. Like they were like, holy shit! Like yeah. you should take this more serious. Yep. 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 Yeah. I've always I I. I I imagine I know that I process oxygen very inefficiently because I'm not very fit, but yeah, that's that bodybuilder guy. It's a lot of expensive oxygen sapping tissues that he oh, has man. on that body. That he's carrying around with him all the time. It'd be way better off if he just replaced all that muscle with fat. Yeah. Way better VO2 max that way. Hundred percent. Have you ever quit a workout like twenty seconds in because you realize you way miscalculated? Like uh, you, I've made adjustments. Yeah, one hundred percent. I don't quit workouts. I will change what the rep scheme or the rounds <laughs> you were. Would scale I definitely do that. I scale. Exactly. Scale exactly. I, I spontaneously, needed. especially with workouts I make up myself, spontaneously scale it over the course of the workout. Mm-hmm. That was what that was, often happens. That was actually one of my workouts at Wadapalooza. It was that the whatever mm-hmm. it takes booth. They had a sick ass rig set up mm-hmm. for everybody to come try out, and I was going to do a twenty minute AMRAP of 10 uh, dual dumbbell snatches, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 10 burpees, 10 wall ball, and then 10 toe to bar without grips or chalk. <laughs> and uh, after the first round, I quickly was like, I'm <laughs> fucking doing five. Yeah. I might, maybe five toe to bar, maybe. Okay. Maybe two toe to bar per round. <laughs> maybe three toe maybe, to bar Maybe per five, round. four, three, two, one. Maybe that's going to be my rest period, and then I'll do five. So <laughs> I, it was a built-in rest, and it was because people were in my way, but it was, it was really nice. because I was tired. Yeah, no, I became very fond of the the uh, of decreasing <laughs> the son of a bitch outside. They they can't hear it. No one can hear it, yeah. but they might be able to see it. Uh, Bowie is is outside, freaking the fuck and out. He's really pumped about getting back inside right <laughs> yeah. now, and uh, uh, is basically trying to jump through the glass door. He was I'll not like it. to be the only dog outside. Um, yeah, are we pausing? No, no, I'm just uh, the door. keep talking. Okay, All right, everybody, we're gonna let the dog in. Uh, we're gonna see what happens. Uh, I mean. Other other than working out, mm-hmm. um, did you guys get to watch any of the uh, the fitness? Not a lot. I've only seen just a couple so you, little clips on social media. Bits. So you guys bits. have no idea about Danny Danny Spiegel. I don't know. What's I the know deal with I, Danny I know who she is. I know she did well in a thing. But what else? What's going on? Uh, so go on, Chase. She mother first. She called her shot mm-hmm. and said, "I'm going to motherfuck this snatch handstand oh, walk I obstacle I did see workout." That. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. And everybody's like, all right, whatever. Yeah. And then she did it in the same heat as Tia Claire Toomey. Uh-huh. Super fucking strong. Yeah. It was ascending snatches and a handstand mm-hmm. walk for the ramp. And uh, all of the girls are treating these snatches as if they're heavy singles. Uh-huh. And she comes out first round and uh, power snatched TNGs, all of them. Uh, yeah. Does her handstand walk I think it was ramp. 145. She 145. Instead of five. Oh, wow. Touch and nice. go. Does the handstand walk ramp. Uh, effortlessly like sprinting uh-huh. goes to the next weight and i believe that one was also tng right no she yeah. did those in singles the one it was 165 i think and mm. then she finished up with singles but the they are all power snatches oh, yeah. none Easy. of them were full <laughs> nice she beat in a in like an event that the average like top 10 girls who finished it uh you know the workout was maybe four it? and a half minutes long or maybe uh-huh. five minutes long yeah she beat Tia Claire to me by a minute. Wow. It yeah, was, it was brutal. It yeah, was she unreal. Was, she savaged that workout. It was yeah. fucking crazy. How did she, she do over the rest of the weekend? She got fifth. Oh, she nice. got fifth overall. Yeah. So nice. and she also uh she also um podiumed at uh Dubai. Nice. So she basically so she's, or she's, was like fourth or something at Dubai. In that case, I'm going to say she has got herself a spot to the game. She's I'm basically got that. herself a spot to the yeah, game. And she has maybe three more events that she's going to compete yeah, at. Yeah, because she's crushed go, yeah. like, all the online qualifiers. Yeah, she fits with, uh, within the top five for a couple more events she's Monster. in. Just because that is something to consider is that, folks, Tia Claire Toomey is going to be uh, taken off the top with maybe a open win. Uh, Sarah Sigmund's daughter might qualify out of Iceland for something else. Who knows? Mm. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna say she's in. I'm gonna say No Olson is for sure. She's in, mm-hmm. uh, even though he got third place. Trevor Mayer is in. It's something. It's just something to see that type of fucking execution in person. Like I was yeah. like, baffled. yeah, that was pretty gnarly. Baffled. It was really really impressive. It was probably my favorite competitive moment of the entire weekend, mm. and probably the most impressive part of the entire weekend. Nice. Trying to think man. of what other what other moments were, uh, were kind of like that. Fury, but that was pretty good. The the fury of Rich Froning on the last worm event. 
I yeah. had no doubt that if the rest of his team dropped that worm, that he would be able to keep that worm up <laughs> off the ground. <laughs> including the ends. The completely ends. off the ground, just using his fury alone. That yes. worm would Levitated. stay levitating out of, uh. out of fear. <laughs> well, yeah. what he would do is he would put the worm on his back, but he would spin around such that centrifugal force would lift just kept it up the ends up and he would just knock everyone out in all the other lanes lanes. they're like i don't know it's still Uh, a good rep he's in his lane his worm's not yeah that's right i think rich clean and jerked they have a wonder max clean and jerk the teams did i think he hit like 345 maybe and it was the first time over in over two years he'd clean and jerked more than 305 wow really yeah the heat of competition you guys yeah Hmm. Mm-hmm. Apparently, apparently, you know, knee surgeries will do that to you. <laughs> Fuck. Um, let's uh, uh, right. Well, right now, as we're recording this, the it's what is it? Okay, so the the second day of the Australian CrossFit Championship literally just started. Nice. And uh, there's no live stream, so we have no way of really talking about that yet. Yet. Who knows what tomorrow holds? There still won't be a live stream oh, okay. tomorrow. Then just never in mind. Okay. Forget what I said. Um, so <laughs> that's going on. Um, but let's talk. Um, let's talk True Detective, guys. Yeah. yeah. Wait, wait. There's one more fitness thing. What's what? the fitness thing? Jacob Heppner is going to be at Mid Atlantic. Yeah, Challenge, yeah, that's oh. right. Jake finally decided that he's going to do one of these sanctioned events that he's qualified for, and he's nice. picking the Mac. The Mac. The Mid Atlantic CrossFit Challenge. Nice. Now, which is in like the DC area. Was mm-hmm. that a thing that has existed previously, or is that a modified version of like the Mid Atlantic? It did. Regional no, yeah, it's okay. been it's been around for I want to say like six or seven years. Okay. Yeah, so it's been around for a while. So Heps is Heps is stepping onto the fucking competitive Who floor. Who else is going to be out there with him? Um, I don't know. I don't know any of the names. That yeah, I haven't looked at the I haven't looked at the qualifiers, so I'm not 100 yeah. sure. But I think what we're going to be seeing with the season, because of how it's been shaping up with you know where the backfilling of the invites are and how the athletes are kind of coming into learning what the best way of securing their spot is. Mm -hmm. I think what we're going to see, at least for this season is we're going to see really, we've, we've seen really big competition at the first couple events of the season. Yeah. We're probably going to see really deep competition in the last few events of the season, Mm -hmm. but the events in the middle, my guess is we're going to be seeing one, maybe two names showing up to compete. Mm -hmm. Um, It's going to be pretty light. You know, Mm -hmm. what's like Australian CrossFit Championship that's going on right now. It's basically James Newberry. Sam Briggs is there, but she has a spot already Mm -hmm. on the women's side. Maddie Sturt is competing. She's like a three time games athlete. So that's probably going to be her spot. Alethea Boone's not. Alethea Boone. I think she's there. Okay. Um, That's have, right. You I, do I it in that Australian it. accent. It's the um, only way you can say it. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess I guess I think what we're, what we're going to be seeing is is a lot of these m- middle of the season events are probably only going to have one or two recognizable names um, mm. in each division. And that's going to be interesting to see. Is right? that because you think these 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 uh, mid season events they just have someone who's solidly going to take the spot who's already committed, or are they just open opportunities for some uh, top twenty CrossFitter just swoop in there and grab a ticket? I think it's because it's an open opportunity. Yeah, yeah I think I think there's. Um, there's probably a lot more communication between a lot of the athletes going on mm. than, than most people see, but at the same time, you know, they're, the people who are capable of winning a sanction event are generally also capable of doing well in the open. Mm. So what I think is happening is everyone rushed to get their invites through the first couple events because it was a good opportunity. Mm-hmm. But now that we have a better idea of how the open uh, qualifications are going to work, I think what they're going to try and do is hit the open, try and make that top 20 because the national champions don't count in the top 20 worldwide. Mm. So if you if you qualify as a national champion and you get into the top 20 worldwide, mm-hmm. then your top 20 spot goes to like 21st. Yeah. So really what you're talking about is like maybe the top 35 in mm. the open is there that much diversity of country in the top 20 that it would oh, give sure. up 15 spots i would say i would say yeah. there's probably nine to nine to 13 countries for mm. sure represented in there i mean I'll, i don't know off the top of my head but there's a f- there's at least a few countries uh in europe and you know the u.s is always represented there mm-hmm. australia is generally represented there yeah. um okay. so Canada's generally represented there. Mm-hmm. So you're, you know, you're talking about right there, like seven. Mm-hmm. So I think you can come up with a few more. Nice. Um, but either way, 
I think what's going to happen is they're going to focus on the open, see what the open is like, and then keep their plans around for like an, uh, an audible for mm. some of these in mid season events. Yep. Right. It's kind of crazy to think that like if that many people are, or if a significant number <clears throat> and a significant number of elite CrossFitters are all going to be <laughs> thinking about the open as their way to the games, we're going to see a very competitive open when that comes around, you know, I was just Probably. realizing that it re- when, when the difference between where your placement is the different in the open is the difference between whether or not you're going to the games or not, and not just, you know, how you're getting into regionals. It'll be interesting to see if we get any of that, you know, that Dan Bailey turbo pull-ups kind of era of like open competition. The open's going to be really, really weird and different this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, there won't be any live announcements. So we're going back to 2011 mm-hmm. where they're releasing videos or whatever of mm-hmm. the of the open workouts. Um, because Greg Glassman understands that burning money isn't good anymore. Yeah, yeah I, under- I get it. Seems like it. Rest and assured somewhere Dave Castro is in a room giving a workout. Standing in front of a chalkboard. Yeah, he actually no started. Yeah, he started saying what nineteen point one is <laughs> uh, last week. Yes. So hopefully, He's by the time there. it rolls through, he'll be finished. <laughs> um, but the workouts are going to be released without live open announcements. Mm-hmm. The workouts are still being programmed by Dave, but are being very greatly influenced by Greg Glassman. Mm. And if you've seen the main site recently, you've seen what Greg Glassman's workouts look like. Mm. They're very strict. They're very gymnasty. I think he's had like the push up, pull up, squat combo in seven or eight workouts mm. in this calendar year so yeah. far. And we're talking about three weeks. Yeah. That there've been a multiple per week. Um so I would I would definitely bank on an event or two that has strict movements in it and mm. bank on an event or two that has like you know, conditions to RX that aren't things that we normally see, perhaps even like making a touch and go against the rules. Mm. Um, so I, I don't even know. I, don't, mm. I, I would be really surprised if we saw an open that's anything at all like what we've seen in the past couple of years. What would be the indicate? Is there some been some indication on the main site programming that... Um that uh, touch and goes are going to be uh, prohibited, and what would tu- what would prohibiting a touch and go even look like? I think one of the things that I saw, and I, I have to look it back up, but there was a thing about main site programming grace, mm. but not allowing touch and go workouts okay. or touch and go cleaning jerks. How does how would but grace yeah, work? Yeah, what does that even mean? I'm, I'm not you sure. Have to drop I think it's it every meant time to be done or? singles. Yeah, I think okay. it's meant to be done singles. I, I, again, I, I, this is something that I, I have not at all looked into, so I could be making that shit up. Or is it the kind but of like, thing where you as, could as a as like an example, right? It's like three rounds of seven dumbbell bench press and five strict L pull ups and then a thousand meter row for time. The score is dumbbell load as a percentage of body weight and row time. That was the workout from yesterday. Mm. Um, that is an interesting way of scoring. The day that. before mm. that, three rounds for time, one minute L sit hold from the ground, two minutes holding a handstand, five hundred meter row. The the day before that, Rough. seven six five four three two one strict muscle ups and uh, pistols on the right, followed by pistols on the left. I like that. Mm. That is a good one. I actually, kind of like these workouts. I mean, I would scale them down radically, <coughs> but on a fifty-minute kind of clock with no rest, fifteen minutes of hand, no rest between sets, fifteen minutes of handstand practice, ten minutes of L sit practice, five minutes of double unders, twenty minutes of stretching. Uh, sure. CrossFit total uh, for <laughs> time, strict and for time, ten, twenty, thirty pull-ups, push-up squats, row two K, fifteen, thirty, forty-five pull-ups, push-up squats. Uh, 20, 20 and, the row, and the row goes down. So it's like a lot of strict gymnastics, mm-hmm. a lot of kind of like really the and and two days before that was more strict pull ups, push ups, and squats. Um, I don't see many barbells going on. There. I don't see many barbells. Yeah. Here you go, uh, Grace. Thirty clean and jerks. Okay, so this one was was written as squat clean Grace, but okay. it doesn't have anything okay. about. Okay, perhaps it's in the comments or something. I don't know. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Interesting. Squat clean grace is an interesting um, variation on it. But yeah, but I can't imagine what what grace would even be at that loading with uh, without without touch and go reps. I guess it would. I guess it would just be dropping and then grabbing. But yep. that just sounds annoying. Twitty like you'd spend weird. the whole first half of the workout just trying to like get a, a, a handle on your barbell as it's yeah. bouncing in front of you. Yeah. Oso clips. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, you got to have good clips on that mm-hmm. fucking bar yeah. if you're going to be dropping it every rep. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you're going to every like five or six reps, you're going to have to stop and turn around and like, okay, put my ass up in the air and fucking <laughs> rip that plate right back onto you the mean collar. You guys, you get, that's not how you guys work out every single time. <laughs> you, guys, you guys get to the point where your lower back is so fucking blown up. That you have to like kneel to do anything that involves the bar. Yeah, I've yeah. Been every there time I work out. Yeah. yeah. God, dude. Is there? Uh, oh, good. Oh, I was like, my my lower back normally is blown out, but then so are my knees. So I mean, decide: <laughs> am I going to bend over and hurt my back? That's a good point. Or am I going to bend my knees and hurt my knees? And it's yeah. usually uh, it's it's fifty fifty each time. You should just try laying down on your side mm-hmm. and then adjusting it and yes. helping have like roll to your back. And wait for someone to come pick you up. Have there you, you go. That's, you, that last piece is necessary. Have you no? The, the move is you sit on the plate while you're adjusting that, things. On there the plate. we that go. Is, I've that's done that. the I've move. Done that. Yeah, I've got another way of doing yeah. it. Uh, you basically step over to where the plates are wiggly on the end of the bar. Mm-hmm. You face away from the bar, but you like back your heels up against the plate, and then you like jump backwards and push it on with your feet. <laughs> that sounds more energetic. Than you're that. laughing, but that is <clears throat> way fucking faster yeah. than you know anything else yeah. involving doing that. I, or you, know, you just snatch by reaching out to the ends of the plate yes. and gripping the plate. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. style. Duh. Yeah. The, um, I don't know if... when I One thing that I have always implemented to help change out plates more conveniently, and I just assume that everyone did this, but I, I uh, but just in case, and, and, and maybe I've nipple mentioned some clamps. Class, nipple clamps, exactly. But when you're, well, let's see, you got, you got a bar on the ground, it has anything more than uh, 225 pounds on it. You, you just, you get a two and a half pound plate. Uh, let's see, you got you 400 pounds it. on it. You get a two and a half pound plate. Half. You put the two and a half pound plate on the ground. And then you just roll the blare on top of it, yeah, and man. it's a little jack that lifts the thing up. And I, I've always just done this, and I assume that everyone else did the same thing. But more, I've seen so many people, uh, both online and in person, struggling with trying to pull because be, like at our gym, we don't have we don't have like a real bar jack, and so like they're struggling to pull plates onto uh, uh, onto the bar if it's on the platform. And I'm like, you just take a little cookie. So in case this is new to anyone else out there in the world, take a little cookie, a little two and a half pound plate. Put it on the ground, roll the first plate on top of it, and it lifts everything about a half inch off the ground. And you can just add 500 pounds, take off 500 pounds, whatever you want to do. So that's free advice. Uh, it in would case be in that wants. order. I would add 500 pounds and then take it off yes. because there's nothing I can do with 500 yes. pounds on a barbell. Well, it would be weirder if you did it the other way. You know, you first took it off and then put it back on for that's no right. reason. That's a good point. Yeah. That would be The weirder. workout is loading and unloading 500 pounds mm-hmm. for time. That should be one of the 2019 open workouts. Yes. I'd love to see that. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. That's a pretty that good, is one. A good one. I tried to get back into the gym the other day. Uh, did one workout. Thought I would take it easy. Completely overdid it, and I am still recovering. Like ten days later from uh, uh, just 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 fucked my legs up. That's like how crazy. that's how I feel constantly. Yes. Work out like twice a week. Yep. And my body's like, no, yes. don't do that. Yep. Why you do that to yep. yourself? I l- the best part is when you go in and you assume that you are taking it lightly. Like this is my taking it lightly workout. Like I'm just gonna. Listen, there's no reason to jump in there, ruin it for yourself. Take it easy. You take it easy, and then like your legs start cramping up on the way home, and you're like, oh, no. I keep warning you against this. You do mm. this every time. <laughs> yeah, every like, time after a layoff, you, you load it up and do five sets of five or something wacky yeah, like that. That is there. what I did. Last yeah. night, uh, Katie and I went and worked out. I was and, there. And uh, Chase was there. I watched Chase uh, attempt a PR back squat. Didn't quite go his way. Did not What happen. was the attempt? What, what was, was the weight? Attempt? 460. Nice. Um, Got buried. Which is crazy considering his PR is like 375. I don't know why. Nice. Uh, No, we went afterwards and. uh, I'm just picturing someone at 375 getting under 460. (laughs) Just with that little like, "Ah, kink. (laughs) (laughs) Just like a sigh. (laughs) Just wilting under the bar. Yeah, See, that's just, a win. It if just you don't, sounds like, <laughs> damn it. If you, if you don't yip like a little, like a dog that's been stepped on, that's a win. I was just imagining it looked like that skinny guy, <laughs> video of that skinny guy trying to squat 315 there, which is still hilarious to this day. Uh, skinny guy, mid, uh, body's uh, not ready. A uh, runner looks like uh, you know has three fifteen on the bar. Oh, no. Obviously, this guy can't squat three fifteen. Uh. But I think he was just doing lots of partial squats, mm. then goes down like an inch too low, and then just gets buried by it. <laughs> there's no there's no uh, safety bars or anything of either. Course. So that's uh, that's plenty fun. Plenty uh, fun. Uh, 
I just I'm checking my phone not because this is boring. It is, yeah. but because oh, yeah. uh, Brent oh. Fikowski is running an AMA right now, oh. and I had I had a few questions for him. Yeah. Um, question one was, and I'll pose it to you guys as mm-hmm. well in case you guys are interested. If you could be a Jedi or the captain of the USS Enterprise, which would you be? Jedi. 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 Yeah, and I think course. that was an easy one. Yeah. yeah. So Jedi is the answer that he gave as well. I, if you're captain, you know, the Enterprise, you're just a normal guy. You're, you're just an old British guy. I don't know, man. Yeah. So that, to me, that's a hard question to answer. Mm, but whack. Whatever. I mean, I dig. Just be which a Jedi? Jedi and which it. Jedi? <laughs> well, yeah, it's like, but it's like basically. Are you one of those like plebe Jedi's that gets? Fu- are you a youngling? You just get I don't fucked think by Anakin. Ah. The reason, the reason, Tip Fisto. Yeah. The reason is, it's like you're not asking like, would you rather live in the Star Wars universe or the Star Trek universe? You're, it's like, or like, which is a better thing? You're basically saying it would be like, which would you rather be, like Superman? Or Natalie Portman from Thor, <laughs> and like, and you're like, it's like Marvel DC. I'm like, that's not quite the issue. It's like I'd much rather be the superhero than just the person. All right. Anyway, you know? would you rather be an Avenger or part of the Justice League? Oh, uh, Avenger, come for the sure. fuck on, dude. Jesus Christ, guys. It depends. I, what I, member I, of the I Justice like League. I gave not you an that Avenger. Easy. Yeah, I would definitely go with Avengers because I think I have a better shot of being awesome. You know. And yeah, way better chance of having real superpowers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty fucked up. Because you, you did, and then all of a sudden you find out you're fucking Batman. I guess it would be sweet to be that rich. That would be awesome to be Batman. I'm rich and sad. I'm rich and anyway, sad. Anyway. Yeah, but, uh, but, but, the, but the Avengers got Iron Man, which is the same thing, but way more shit. shit. And I have way a heart condition. Yeah. And he's also an alcoholic. alcoholic yes. yeah. but, yeah. Uh, and a you, dick. But if you're going to be a guy... If you're gonna be a rich guy who fights crime, you want to be a rich guy who fights crime with a cape and a car, or you want to be a rich also, guy who has a giant super suit and he flies. And you're not allowed to shit. tell anyone that you're that guy. Yeah. As Iron Man, you can fucking tell everybody. It's true. That's a good point. All right. Lives so then loud. the third question I asked was, has Tom York jumped the shark? What's been going on with Tom York lately? I don't know. Have you seen him or heard anything that what he's been this? putting what out? No. The lead singer of Radiohead. Yeah. Oh, oh Tom, Tom York. York. What did I say? I Tommy said Tom, York. I, I, I heard. Tom I York. heard Tommy Ork is what I heard, and I'm like, who the fuck is Tommy Ork? <laughs> yeah, Tom York. That, that's oh. a that's a you problem. So wait, what is but, what uh, happened with Tom? Yeah, York? I have no idea about this. His recent music is terrible. Oh, I'm just I, wondering I, whether I, he's jumping. Oh, so doing solo shit or something? Yeah. Well, the only thing I've heard from him lately is is the Suspiria score. Was that good? It was I honestly I I remember the movie I don't necessarily remember his score but the mm. the movie was good so I assume his score was yeah. good. <laughs> I think he even had, does some singing in that score, does he not? He, like he, a does, he does song. a song. He, he does a song. What else does he do besides <laughs> right. that? He's real good at that. And as we established on a previous episode of this podcast, you know that Tom York stole that shit from uh, what's his fucking name? God damn it! I fucking thought it would come to me. Halfway through that sentence. Sometimes I start a sentence and I don't know how I'm going to yeah. finish it. You know the guy who sung the song? Yeah, the Hallelujah. Like, oh, it's a uh, cover Rufus of a, Wainwright? No, it's a cover of the Len- of the Leonard Cohen song, but uh, fuck you guys. <laughs> I'm going to fucking find it. Find it. Find it and then so I'm anyway, going to What else is going on yeah. in that brand? F- oh, okay. <laughs> no, no, keep going. We're going to figure this out. Oh, yeah, the yeah. Brent Fikowski AMA. What oh, else? yeah. The other is? thing that I asked him is the devil Jeff shows Buckley. Up. Jeff Buckley is his there name. There you go. And so, the st- as the story goes, uh, Tom York was... Are we stopping the camera? No, no, no Tell the story. Oh, as, have a minute. As the story goes, uh, Tom York went to a Jeff Buckley show and was so inspired by the by uh, him that he went back and re-recorded all the vocals for the Benz afterwards. And if you ever listen to Jeff Buckley's one album before he drowned to death in the mid-90s, you can hear him and he's doing all of like the really... like. Ah! like stuff that Tom York is famous for it's fucking all there so anyway everyone go listen to fucking Jeff Buckley if you dig Radiohead so then the last question I asked on the AMA you didn't ask these as scale as needed right no I asked as myself good I didn't want uh, to be attributed to yeah, these lame questions guys. <laughs> these lame ass questions uh, the last thing I asked him was the devil shows up in Kelowna and guarantees you win the CrossFit games but he'd have to make you five foot seven. do you take the deal <laughs> mm. <laughs> damn that's a good one and he uh, says I don't do deals with the devil but in the spirit of the question I think yes he <laughs> says I wouldn't cheat to win but if I had to change something about my body to make myself quote less appealing if that's what being shorter is, then yes. <laughs> There's no need for quotes there. It's true. Like, yeah. if I had to put on a lot of body fat, which would make me less appealing, I guess, and it wasn't overly unhealthy for my longevity, but it would help me win, I'd put the weight on. I See, that's the thing is, I feel like, I feel like, 
the five seven thing is not it's not just to book and appealing it's just if you took brent fakowski and you scaled him down to five seven but he was able to retain a majority of his strength at five seven he would win the cross yeah he games. would definitely be yeah. so so that's the way i interpret it is like you just be a really jacked fit dude who happens mm-hmm. to be five seven. i mean the same was, weight obviously if he just was so five seven he would probably snatch like 340 pounds <laughs> yeah like a lot of inches lower yeah. to get. You just take you just you, you, I think you take percentage of your total height that you're losing uh. and then just add that percentage to your one or maxes <laughs> and that's what that's, that's what the, you'd that's gain. That's the score. That's yeah. the calculation when people get shorter as yeah. they I don't snatch. know if that math checks out. I'm pretty yeah. sure it does. I'm yeah. pretty sure that's science. Uh let's talk true detective episode yeah. 3 guys. Let Did, us. Chase, have you seen I any of these? Seen shit. I haven't watched any of them. Oh, well you should. Okay. Well, fuck you. It doesn't matter. We're going to do this anyway. I'm going to listen. Uh, in this episode, um, there were a few little moments. Yes. Like uh, when they find in the 1980 timeline, they find uh, spoilers abound. They mm-hmm. find the picture of the kid uh, mm-hmm. doing the little like during his first communion. He has like his uh, arms, his, uh, his hands uh, up like a prayer position, his eyes closed, the same yes. position he was found in. Mm-hmm. Was Which dead. gives us yet another cliched sort of red herring there, yeah. thinking of Catholic school, Catholic priests, yeah. all that yeah. kind of stuff. Which there. I th- yeah, which I think will will go down like a, a Law and Order SVU style uh, 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 digression, wherein they find the person who took the photo, finds that he takes a lot of these photos. He's suspicious. They're going to investigate him, but then it turns out that though the photo did inspire him to be laying that way, it wasn't the man who took the photo, but someone else who had see that photo on a regular basis Shit. who is completely another person entirely. absolutely that's so it'll be fun to watch that play yeah, out exactly yeah. like that uh but i do want to point out though that one thing that uh, i called before there was any positive indication of it uh but already there, we're already seeing it happen in episode three is we're starting to see the in the 1990 version uh the marriage begin to fall apart and uh there's a prediction on the first bit that his all of his big emotions about his wife who recently passed away were meant to assume that her, her passing away was in fact the end of their marriage because he gets so emotional and I really think that their marriage probably ended in the 90s and that's why that she's only recently died and he has broken up about it but we're going to see that marriage end in the middle timeline. I mean he he has a hallucination with her in it mm-hmm. uh, near the end of the episode yeah. where she... Oh, you know, yeah. talks very cryptically about yeah. sort of like, are you going to rediscover the things that you hid? Are yeah. you going to remember the thing you left in the woods? Yep. Oh, and shit. Uh, it kind of it kind of freaks him the fuck out. Yep. But we also get basically strict confirmation yep. at the beginning of this episode that he definitely suffers from dementia, mm-hmm. possibly Alzheimer's. And is like, you know, the whole trusted narrator is not so trusted anymore. And this is Mahershala Ali. Yeah. He's amazing in this fucking From Into the Spider Verse. Oh, yes. Dude. Yes. And That's uh, his yes. main thing. The and main uh, thing. Bro- For me, it is. Yeah, <laughs> broadly, structurally, it looks like in episode three, the main thing that happened is well, in the first two episodes, basically, all the action, all the Ford Prells of action was in 1980. And that the 90s and the 2015 timelines are basically looking back on that. In this episode, we have the 1990 timeline kind of busts open. So it's no longer just a retrospective, but where it's actively moving forward. Mm-hmm. And what I think we're going to see in the fourth episode, probably, if they're going to adhere to this, is uh, the 2015 timeline will finally bust open a bit where he's not just being interviewed by that lady endlessly. And more new developments are going to occur. So mm-hmm. we have forward momentum in all three timelines yeah. simultaneously. Yeah. yeah, it seems like at some point, right, the, the 1980 timeline is going to come to a head with them falsely convicting Mm -hmm. someone right which is what Mm -hmm. starts the 1990 timeline but uh the question is is what he's hiding is what he's forgetting or and or remembering in 2015 from the 80 timeline or the 90 timeline i have a prediction for who they're going to falsely accuse now that's going to happen they uh those rednecks uh fucked with uh the indian trash collector fellow seriously what the fuck was that who then looked like he was uh his he was mentally fraying at the edge so i think he's going to do something extreme and violent uh, well, which plus was then, there was that little clip oh, of him yeah. grabbing that little body thing wrapped in was a bag. Was it a body yeah, or was, was it a, a gun? Well, that's the thing. Well, you didn't know. You didn't know. You yeah. just see him grabbing this amorphous thing that yeah. I think was meant to read to look like a kid's body in a bag. I don't think that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. But as he, but he grabbed it out of that uh, shit. Or it might have been some other kid. Who knows? Yeah. But uh, I think that, yeah, he was going to do some ex- bit of extreme violence. Pro- po- well, no, probably not resulting in his 
death. I can't remember. Did they say the guy that they got yeah, for it died? They, they try and overturn it. Yeah. Or yeah. Okay. So he's still. So yeah. But anyway, he's gonna do something extreme, which is gonna put much more uh, scrutiny upon him and lots of the city, whatever people who are corrupt are gonna say, yeah, this is the guy. Just find find uh, evidence to make him the guy. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. So that's gonna happen there. Yeah, two predictions that I my predictions from the first episode that I think are I'm getting more positive indications are going to happen, and I think the really cool scene where the wife revisit kind of visits him like a ghost, um, you know, even though it's part of his mental craziness or whatever, uh, I think that again it will sort of be revealed in a way that he that Mahar, Ma, uh, what is, how is it Mahershala. Mahershala. Mahershala Mahershala Ali is in fact kind of also one of the bad guys of the show that he's not a nice man that he uh and that maybe even and this is where i'm a little bit i don't know but maybe even certain aspects of things he did or didn't do he's not even aware of he has forgotten and he will be painfully reminded of those things in in the future um but i think that he definitely did some bad stuff and as we see him begin to be increasingly mean to his wife in the 1990 timeline uh, as we see him, uh, sh- her saying, "Do you remember what you did? Leaving shit in the woods." I have a feeling that very soon we're going to get to the point where we realize he's maybe not a nice guy. So. And this is also something developed here, which I was sort of predicting would happen last time, but where uh, uh, his memory is clearly inconsistent in the past that we are seeing, such that big things just get left out, like all the business. You see, in the first couple episodes, we saw. Various of the suspects around, in and around where the kids were. We saw the teenagers. We saw the Indian guy. Uh, we saw all of that take place. And we thought we had a pretty good idea of an objective perspective on who all was around at the time. But then in this episode, there's all this biz- business about a brown car. Mm-hmm. A brown, uh, expensive car with yep. a black man and a white woman in it yep. that didn't factor into any of the shit we saw from 1980. So this is further confirmation that what we have seen so far of the past is not an accurate record. It's not necessarily... This is, this is a it, memory yeah. with gaps mm-hmm. due to dementia, possibly due to lying. That was one that of the things... given us a selective view of this. I was wondering, did we see a brown car in the first... I remember I remember making a comment about a brown car, but mm-hmm. then I think the... Because we, we watched it with Giannis and Kelly and Katie, and it was like... One of them was like, was uh, was Roland's car brown? His partner was his yeah. partner's car, car brown. That's what I thought. Maybe that it's yeah. That was the first thing I thought when the guy said like in the brown car, it was like white or black and white, like you guys. My thought is, is it them who are the people? And we know that they get up to some bad shit on their own out in the world because uh, like when they beat up that dude in the first episode, you know, um, but that was my first thought. But here's the thing when you're saying that we're seeing a memory that's distorted by dementia and stuff is that uh, when he is presented with the Brown car information, he reacts to it, not with, and that was, uh, maybe I'll have to look back on this, not with confusion, but instead with being coming physically upset uh, at this new information. And so I'm wondering, I think that what we are seeing is definitely partial but I think with lots of glaring omissions from the past, but I still think that what we're seeing, yeah, is uh, sort of uh, a, a uh, an edited version of the past, not necessarily whole things misremembered. Yeah, it Maybe. may not be it may not be absolutely falsified. It may be almost like being used as a tool for the 2015 version of Wayne and us to be told the story at the same mm-hmm. time because he's mm-hmm. discovering it and learning it except he just happened to have also lived through it and mm-hmm. forgotten about it. And I think that Brown car moment is really interesting because he goes and visits the house and to us, we're watching it and it seems like, Oh, they're following a lead, mm-hmm. right? You don't realize yeah. that what you're seeing is something that he's forgotten, mm-hmm. right? He goes, he goes to the house. The guy tells him about the Brown car. It's really fancy. And the dudes inside of it, uh, the, the couple is inside of it. Mm-hmm. And then the, the, the lady at the show almost pulls like a gotcha. Yep. And she's like, oh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And she, she kind of confronts him with this thing where like all yeah. these people talk about seeing the same car and yep. no one followed up on it. Why do you, why do you think that's the case or what happened there? Or even the fact that at some point and my, my assumption at the time was something more like this, that his official record or version of the story that he submitted stated that this brown car didn't exist and that the basically him denying the existence of this brown car is has to do with his own lies and his own cover-up or his own 
you know, the complex nature of that situation required him to lie, and so she was being basically being conf- called out on a lie yeah. by the little blonde lady. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'd say it's one. It's it's a. Com- it could be a combination of both. In fact, it could be. It could be that the eight that what we're seeing in 1980 is a combination of his lying in 1990 and his dementia in 2015. Mm-hmm. That both things are giving us an uh, a or distorting what it is that we're seeing. Yeah, I, I think I think basically what what we're seeing is an expansion of one of the coolest fucking things from the first season Mm -hmm. which was them uh which was woody harrelson and matthew mcconaughey jointly telling separately but telling the same story of what went down when they first Mm -hmm. found that that dude and then the actual story being shown to us later Mm -hmm. on of what went down when they found that dude on the compound and uh it, listen, if they make an entire season based around that concept, I'm fucking down. Yeah. Because that oh, yeah. was such a cool moment from the first season. And it, that's one of the things that I like a lot about this season versus the last season is the last season felt like it lost a lot of the uh, a lot of the um, the 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 texture that made the first season so good, but kept a lot of the sort of like surface level details strange Mm -hmm. conversations everyone's way too fucking chill about all these different shit Mm -hmm. fucking murders but then the mystery around it wasn't necessarily that interesting it was just full of a bunch of red herrings that went in no directions whereas this season it may very well be filled with a bunch of red herrings that go no no, nowhere and Mm -hmm. it may very well be filled with you know this this very uh uh, compelling mystery at the heart of it but it has so much texture to what's happening and who it's happening to that you can't help but be engrossed in like those different timelines and the story that's being told and the way it's being told. And by the way, I just want to say that like already, like even if the thing goes completely to shit after this episode, which I don't think it will, like we're already, it's already it's so much better than the first, there's sorry, than the second season. Uh, just because at least by episode three, fuck by episode one of this season, I was engaged. I like, I, I was on board and that just never happened in the second season until I gave up like five, five episodes in. So we're already way, you know what I feel sorry for in all this Taylor Kitsch. Yeah. 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 Cause you know what? He, you know, he's a good actor. He was on that Friday night light show and like his ticket like, and he, he made it and he had a rough couple of years where every, seemingly unfailing opportunity or like uh, like fucking slam dunk opportunity uh uh went like he was it's cast in john carter of mars it's gonna be a big the guy who directed wally is making a big budget science fiction movie for disney and that fucking tank Tanks and hard. same year it's okay he's in battleship we're talking peter berg directing a big action movie with Rihanna. Where Rihanna's fucking in it and that fucking tanked and he's like fuck and then after you know what it's okay a year later <coughs> True Detective's the biggest thing in the world, and who do they cast as one of the leads in season two? Me. All right, guys, he's rebounding, serious actor time, and he happens to be in the one shitty mm. fucking season. You know, I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna have an alternative theory. I'm gonna say that uh, you know the reason all these things tanked was Taylor Kitsch somehow, <laughs> even though it doesn't appear to be the case. I'm gonna say that Taylor Kitsch is responsible for it. He That's what he uni- thinks when he looks in the mirror every day. <laughs> Unifying mm-hmm. puzzle piece, man. Yes. But he is a uh, he owns a house in Austin, so we got to back him. He yeah. has one of our yeah. own. Time yeah. is a flat circle, so eventually he's gonna come back as the coach in the Friday Night Lights remake. So right. it's mm-hmm. gonna be awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. I guess looking forward to the next uh, the next uh, episode coming out, and uh, I let's let's just wrap it up right here. That's great. It's tight. Awesome. I am Mr. Kyle Bogart on the most central Instagram account on the internet. I am Cliff Dixlap Bogart, and you can find him at. Cliff Bogard on Instagram. I'm at Chase504. And if you saw me at Wadapalooza and you came up and said, hey, hey, and thanks. And I'm at Arm and Hammer TV. And I'm just like 500 and something followers on Instagram away from 10,000 followers. Nice. So Same. If you could just <laughs> hit that follow button, that would be legit. Uh, uh, thank you so much, folks. We never even talked about the Miami video, the music video. I fucking did it. Yeah. I did uh-huh. the Miami thing, guys. Yeah. 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 It was it was pretty dope. Yeah, it check came it out, out really it's nice. Great. Uh, yeah, you can find that on my on my YouTube channel. It's called Will Smith's Miami, kind, kind of. of. <laughs> and uh, it really is Will Smith's Miami, kind of. Bowie says that you should check it out. Uh-huh. Thank you so much, everybody. And we'll catch you next time. <laughs> Later. Later.